I have a beautiful dress to share with you. It's fully lined, it's got a contrast waistband and a sort of full skirt. Really, really pretty dress. And of course I'm sharing with you how I've sewn several of the aspects of this dress. It is a free pattern, so stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and I've been super excited to sew this dress ever since it was released. I'm super excited to share it and it's one of those dresses that just makes you feel pretty. I don't know if you know what I mean but that is the feeling I have right now and it's great to feel like that, especially now. This pattern was released for free a couple of weeks ago by a pattern company called Sinclair. Uh, this is a pattern company based in Australia. The designer's name is Oksana and they have a huge catalogue of patterns for women and men. When I saw the style, I was drawn to it immediately. There are lots of options there within the dress. It has a fitted bodice and three neckline options, crew, scoop and boat neck. There's a separate waistband piece that is in two layers and from there comes a skirt that has a pleat on each side, front and back. It can also be a peplum top and there are lots of sleeve length options. There is actually a legit sleeveless version there, so that's cool. And then short three quarter length a long and then there's like lantern type sleeve with a cuff now my preferred is always a sleeveless you know I like sleeveless it's it's what I'm going to wear usually when I do put sleeves on things they end up being worn a little bit less and because I always want to sew what I want to wear I tend to go for the sleeveless there are optional pockets there and um, there are three views described here but actually you can mix and match all the features available there and create the style that you like. This is a dress designed for knit fabrics, so light to medium weight knits are recommended and it's even described there 50% stretch horizontally and 20% stretch vertically. So those are like the minimum stretch requirements there. Rayon, spandex, bamboo, single brush poly, double brush poly, ITY are the primary recommended fabrics and then the secondary ones could be French terry, uh, double knit, so a little bit heavier weight. I do think because of the features and because of the volume of the skirt, a lighter weight knit would be nicer in my opinion. The ITY I've chosen is beautiful. I love the print. It feels buttery soft and cool on the skin, but it's the very lightweight type of ITY, very slippery, like sliding off the cutting mat. It just, you know, the type of knit that is not the one that you would say, oh, easy peasy knit project. No, the type of fabric I chose made it a little bit more, you know, fiddly, lots of pinning, lots of holding it together so it won't go anywhere. But you can choose easier to work with fabrics and I initially had a double brush poly chosen for this dress. I even showed it in one of my plans the other day when I filmed a knit fabric haul. I had paired this dress to another fabric, but then trying to place the pattern pieces on top of the fabric, I realized nope. <laughs> I needed like 50 more centimeters so that made me take another deep dive in my stash and find this specific fabric that I bought in Chile while I was visiting my parents in the summer you know when life was typical and you could like go to other countries and see your family <laughs> that's the time so good times to remember and you know I always remember specifically where I buy fabrics and they end up being like type souvenirs when you get them from different countries. So it's a really cool collection to have. The size range is really good from size zero to size 30. From extra extra small to 4XL is what corresponds to zero to 30 in the numerical one. That's a bust of 49.8 inches and a hip of 63. So those are the maximum body measurements that this pattern uh, caters for. And now what's unique about this pattern company and I've been noticing that on all the patterns and I think it's awesome is that when you get a pattern so you get a different file for petite, for regular and for tall. So depending on what height you have you probably get a better result and you have seen like 99% of all the patterns I make I'm always doing length adjustments in the bodices, in different areas, in the skirts, pants, crotches, I'm always lengthening stuff. And that's because I'm taller than the standard drafted height for most patterns. So if you're from five foot one to five foot three, you can choose the petite, the regular 
file is for heights of 5 foot 4 to 5 foot 6 and the tall is for 5 foot 7 to 5 foot 9. I'm right in the middle there at 5 foot 8. For my size that I've chosen, which is a 14, there is a CD cup size drafted into the pattern. So perfect. That's what I usually sew when there are cup sizes available. So I was pretty confident I was going to get a good fit around the bust and around the height of the bodice and then the length of the skirt. No pattern adjustments made whatsoever and that's not common for me. In Up Close and So Personal you're going to see how I had to make some small construction changes based on my fabric choice. I majorly had to adapt to my fabric in terms of how to finish the neckline and the sleeveless armholes. Neck bands and arm bands with that type of fabric are just not going to turn out right. It's just not right. Also, because it's so thin, I don't want such a thin fabric clinging to my body because it is a fitted body. So I had to change something there as well. So a little bit different, but it's gonna look the same. No fitting adjustments done. So let's hop and see how I got this done. got my skirt piece that is meant to be cut on the fold twice. I have the bodice pieces there so you can see them. I have a front, I have a back, they're both on the fold. They're very small pieces. I have a waistband piece that I'm going to cut out of a contrast fabric so I'm not going to count that for this fabric usage. It is a really slinky thin ITY. I wouldn't want to have a bodice in a single layer. So because I have enough fabric and I can do it, I'm going to cut them out twice so that the bodice can be lined. I do still want the slinky fabric because this is a full skirt with pleats and I don't want the volume of like a thicker fabric. So I get the best of both worlds. I get a lined bodice that is better looking and supportive. And then I have the nice flowy fabric for the skirt at the same time. I have here a contrast fabric that's going to match my main fabric. It's a sort of burgundy color. I had scraps from other projects. This is a leather look jersey that has a shiny side that looks like leather and the other side is opaque it's quite a structured fabric with good stretch and recovery so it's perfect for the waistbands two pieces cut on the fold right there what i have there is what i'm going to use for bindings for the neckline and the armholes i'm going to sew my two bodice pieces together and treat them as one once i've got them together because i'm doing a double layer and then I'm just going to sew my binding on the neckline and the armhole. I've just cut long pieces that are one and a half inches wide by whatever length. This fabric is extremely easy to press. It actually feels like you're pressing woven. So I've just pressed one of the edges down by three eighths of an inch and left the other side normal because that's the side I'm going to use to sew onto the edges of the armhole and the neckline. I have the bodice sewn, side seams, shoulder seams, very simple to put together, front and back. And I've got the two layers um, wrong sides together. So you can see it's fully lined. When you open this inside, this is how I'm going to wear it. So it's going to look identical and actually I don't even care which is the one that's going to go inside or outside because they are exactly the same. What I've done to keep all these edges together is just do a hand basting there along the edge within the small seam allowance I'm going to use to put the bindings through so I can forget that this is actually two pieces together and just treat it as one to do the bindings. I've got this contrast fabric to do the waistband and it is actually recommended that you choose a fabric that's a little bit more structured than the main just to keep the structure of the waist and not have it look all sloppy. This ITY is extremely thin and slinky. There's no way I could have gotten a really nice looking waistband with that fabric. I've sewn the side seams. I've surged the bottom there for the hem and it looks extremely wide there and that's because there's gonna be a pleat there, there's gonna be a pleat there and the same on the front and the back. So before I attach the bodice to the skirt and all that, I'm gonna deal with the neckline and the armholes so that I don't have to have the whole dress hanging <laughs> while I do that. So once that's all done, I'm gonna go ahead and baste these two together so that I, you know they just act like one piece. I have my bodice here, this is the neckline. You can see my basting stitches right there to keep it together. 
and I measured the circumference and that measures 60 centimeters. There's no way I could have done neck bands with this type of fabric. It's just too thin and too slinky. It would have not looked great. So I'm gonna use this more structured fabric. You can see it's nice. And I don't want the shiny side, I want the opaque side. So I'm just gonna calculate 90% from that. So 60 centimeters times 0.9 is 54 centimeters. So I've measured this 56 centimeters because when I sew this together on the round, I'm gonna use up 3 eighths there and 3 eighths there. So the finished circumference here will be 54 centimeters. And that is 10% smaller than my neckline to make sure you know, I'm not gonna have a gaping neckline. So it'll be smaller. And you know, I'll do quarters, divide everything in four. And then I'm gonna sew this raw edge here onto the neckline. So essentially I decided this was gonna be my wrong side of the dress, although they're exactly the same. So it doesn't really matter. But if I had fabric where you could tell which was the right or the wrong, I would be pinning it like this onto the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm gonna be sewing on the edge at a quarter of an inch, stretching this smaller binding to match the neckline. And then this will just wrap around, go over to the other side, over to the right side of the dress. And that's where I'm gonna to be top stitching it down. I have the binding just pinned onto the neckline with four pins there. And of course the neckline is larger underneath. And as I sew, I'm just gonna be stretching the binding to fit the neckline. I'll be sewing them with a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch. That's how that's looking. So I've decided that this is gonna be my wrong side. You know, it would look like it's the right side, but it's the wrong and it's because I like to turn things over and top stitch where I'm going to see, like on the right side. This is the right side of the bodice. The binding has been sewn in there and then comes over and wraps around the raw edge. And I have just hand basted that in place. So that's around the neckline, the armhole, the armholes, um, I have tried this on and actually the neckline is a bit higher than what I would like, although this is the lower neckline, but I'm not gonna go ahead and like change this anymore. Um, I'll just keep it like that. It's below my clavicles, so I can cope with this. Um, I don't have matching burgundy thread at all, like not even anything that is remotely close. I'm gonna use an edge foot and the only color that is remotely close to this burgundy is purple. So I hope because it is a dark color, it will just blend in there and it won't be that noticeable. I obviously can't go to the shops and get my burgundy color thread. So I'll just have to cope with a different one. I'm using the edge foot to sew this binding on the edge really neatly so that I don't have to freehand it and get all wonky. I think the purple stitching is blending into the burgundy so I don't think it's going to be that noticeable that I don't have the exact burgundy color on the top stitching. These are the two waistband pieces, I've just sewn them there closed, I've got them ready. I'm not using the shiny side on the outside, I'm using the opaque side on the outside. So I'm going to just sandwich the bodice in between these two. I've got the seams of these waistbands in the center back. There's no center back seam, so I just divided the back in half and marked it with a pin. So that's where that only seam is gonna be. And you can see one of the waistbands, right sides together with the top, and then the other one the same. Because I have these the same, you know, you can't tell which is which. But essentially, I just want to enclose the bodice seam within these two waistband pieces and you know you can do this in verse you can do this same process with the skirt but I would rather have the, the normal seam that's going to be sewn and surged uniting this to the skirt than have it up here just because my skin around here on my upper torso is really sensitive so I would rather have like a smoother feel up here than down there just personal preference 
what you do would be the same, you know. Um, if you wanted to enclose this to the skirt, then you would do that first and then attach it to the bodice. But I've opted to do it this way. I have both the wrong sides of the waistbands here. The shiny bit is my wrong side and the shiny bit is my wrong side. So that I'll have two opaque sides like that. So it'll just be a round, you know, it'll just be a norm. So I'm going to keep using my quarter inch seam allowance that this pattern has and just serge this on the round. So the bodice is complete, the waistband is attached so it's really clean there on the front and on the back. As I mentioned I would rather have the seam on the top be finished this way and then treat the bottom of these two together as one piece and attach to the skirt. Um, the bindings are done, it looks really nice, it's very neat and I love the color combinations there. This is the skirt piece. I've sewn the side seams. I'm not doing the pockets, so I just sewed the side seams as normal. And you can see a mark there and a mark there. That's where I'm gonna put them together to form the little pleat. I'll show you one of the pleats. So I had a little blue mark there and one on the other side and I just put them together and then making sure from the fold line I was parallel, I just sewed an inch down. I did back tack there to secure so that on the right side that pleat will be nice and secure. So now I just have to open up this pleat, put it on top there of the seam so that it's centered and I'll just pop a few pins here and then I'll just um, do a basting stitch on the top just to hold it in place. I always make sure to pull these threads because it, the, the fabric just really wants to be eaten here. So I've just sewn that there close to the edge and that forms on the right side that box pleat there. It's going to be super pretty. So I've got all the pleats formed and basted on the top, two on the front, two on the back. What you see here is the bodice on the outside and I have slipped inside the skirt. So that's why you see wrong side in there. Inside the skirt is right sides together with the right side of the bodice, right? It's quite bulky in there because the skirt is inside the bodice. That I have matched the side seam of the bodice there with the side seam of the skirt so that it's like at the same level, although you have this piece of waistband that doesn't have a seam. And I'm going to serge this with the waistband on top and the skirt piece on the bottom because this is just the ITY, a super flimsy thing, and this is the most structured knit. So I would rather have this one on the top. If you put it the other way around, the presser foot might start stretching out the flimsy fabric and then you get all sorts of puckers there on the top. So to avoid that, if I have difference in weights of fabric, I put the structured one on top and the flimsy one on the bottom. While I'm serging these together, I'm not trimming off anything, so I make sure the knife is right on the edge and it's not cutting away seam allowance. Um, I do want to go to the sewing machine and sew at a quarter of an inch there so that there is actually a, a good seam allowance between the waistband and the skirt. For all these other main seams I was trimming away a little bit so that I could have a quarter of an inch seam allowance. If you see I've got a seam gauge here marked with a quarter of an inch seam allowance there. You can see that the seam allowance that the serger does is slightly smaller than that if I were to just serge right on the edge so I had been trimming away little bits there to make sure the seam allowance was correct but for this seam I don't want to trim anything away because I am going to sew with the sewing machine at a quarter of an inch so it's, it's okay you can still sew and you can see I'm not trimming away anything you can see the edge there where I have surged it together without trimming anything away and now I'm sewing right on the edge to keep the quarter inch seam allowance and I'm using a small zigzag 1.5 width 2.0 length and I'm just making sure to sew on the edge. So you can see there my zigzag is sort of very close to the surged edge and I'm keeping the quarter inch seam allowance there. And I do want there to be a bit more seam allowance than what you get with just the serging. So I'm just going to do that all the way on the round. And then the stress is done, just the hem left to do with the twin needle. 
here is my dress. I'm actually matching the dress I'm wearing because this is the fabric I use to do the contrast waistband. You can see that the bodice inside is also made from the main fabric because I lined it. So I just made two exact same bodices, two fronts, two backs, assembled them separately, put one inside the other, wrong sides together, and I showed you how I basted the edges there, right on the edge, just to keep them there because they were sliding around everywhere. They weren't sticking together like other fabrics do. And I did the same for the bottom of the bodice so I could just pretend it was one layer instead of having two together. And having them both be there just gives the bodice that nice compression and support and you're not gonna see the bra line or any of those unsightly things you get for using lightweight fabrics on fitted styles. I can get away with doing that by lining things. <laughs> so I'm glad I had the extra bit of fabric. This fabric for the waistband is perfect. It's structured, it just holds everything in place. You know, the, the skirt you can see is hanging nice and straight. If I had a flimsy waistband, this would be all wonky, you know? So it's gorgeous. There is just one seam there at the back of the waistband and then comes the skirt with the box pleats coming out of there. I twin needled the hem, which took ages. Look, every time I come out here, there's gonna be a storm. It's getting really windy, <laughs> okay. I think if you have really lightweight fabrics that are really nice, you can get away with making fitted bodices if you just line them in the same fabric. So you can see that the bodice is totally lined. This top seam is enclosed within and then the skirt is sewn there. And then the bottom of the waistband I treated like one layer and just sewed the skirt on. I'm a little bit upset that I had to use navy serger thread. <laughs> I had to use purple thread to top stitch the binding on but I think it blended in and you can't tell. I was pretty disturbed by the fact and I was like oh but it was the closest color I had. So it's a very neat dress inside. I did spend a few extra minutes basting all those layers together you know it took a bit longer than it would and then of course this type of binding takes a little bit longer than if you're doing regular armbands and neckbands. So all in all, it's a very easy pattern to put together. I think if you chose the file for your height, you have a much better option of getting a really good fit. And then there's other things that you could look into, like the cup sizes, if it's according to your body size and all of that. Fortunately for me, with the size 14, it had a CD cup bodice and I love this. Let's see how it fits. Here's a view of my dress. I have matching heels actually. <laughs> so I've been trying to collect fabrics that would match these shoes because I don't have many. So I'm glad I have a pairing with these shoes now because I love them. I made the tour option for this pattern and it's perfect for me. I didn't need to do any length adjustments on any place of this pattern. I love this contrast waistband. It feels really nice and supportive on. Full skirts, like full circles and things are my thing. But I like this one because it's pleated and it's full but not extremely full, you know. Here's a closer look at how the waistband fits. It's super snug and from there comes the two box pleats, one on each side. Side seams on the skirt. And the back also has the same box pleats there. Super flattering. I like the skirt because it's, it's pretty full but it's still streamlined here, you know. So I don't have like extra bulk around the abdomen. Um, super flowy, I love it. And the tall length is perfect for me. Look at this, right above the knee where I would want it to be. This bodice hits me just right. Like the waistband, everything is right at my waist. I wouldn't want it higher or lower than this. So tall version, perfect for me. And I'm really happy with the fit there. This is nice and snug, but it's not like killing me. It's good and this structured fabric is needed there to hold up the skirt and everything. Having the two layers there of the bodice makes the straps from bras and things not that visible so I like that. It's like it feels nice and compressive and supportive. Here you can see the top. This is the lowest neckline available. There's two other necklines like a boat neck and a crew neck and I think this is too high for me. Next time I make this dress, I'm gonna lower it by an inch at least. I think this width is okay. I just would like it a little bit lower. 
I mean, it's okay, it's still under the clavicles. For me, it's really important that fabric doesn't actually touch this bit right there. This is supposed to have a neckband and an armband, so it would be higher if had I used the neckband pieces. What I did here with the binding was just wrap around the raw area, so, you know, I have it a little bit lower than it would be, but that's fine. Same as here, this binding has really good cover. I think the arm bands would be a little bit wider, so the cover would be even more. I wouldn't want this to be higher than it is there. Um, if I were to use the bands, I would reduce this a little bit here. But this is the perfect arm size for me. Perfect cover everywhere, like nothing on show, and I like that. And I really like this binding. I think being structured, it made it easy to put on this linky stuff. And having the two layers here makes it feel much better. Otherwise, yeah, I wouldn't want to have this one in a single layer. It's just way too flimsy. There is another free pattern from this brand called the Harper Cardigan. It's been free for months and it's a really nice style, long line, um, the type of classic long cardigan. So I would suggest giving that one a go. My friend Claire from Penguin and Pear has a video all about it. I'll link it down below if you want to know more. I'm going to be downloading it. Trying free patterns from our new brand for you is always a good idea. You get to see how things are. The instructions in this pattern were super comprehensive. Very detailed measurements of the garment, the finished garment measurements. Very easy to navigate and put together as a PDF, you know. The instructions have photographs and words. Very easy to see what they're doing there. Although it is a simple style, if you want to look at them, you enjoy looking at them. <laughs> so I do recommend this pattern. It's super classic, super flattering and super feminine. And I really enjoyed it. And especially because I have shoes that match these colors, you know. So it was a great enjoyable project I tackled this morning and I'm happy, happy. So go ahead and get these patterns I recommend. I will see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye, stay safe.